here with the head coach of the Tigers of Everett Waters University, Toriano Morgan. Coach, uh, things are different now a little bit. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> something that definitely big happened on, a, on Saturday, easily the biggest victory here in program history, a 41-38 victory uh, over a good Tuskegee squad. Uh, to be able to g really go into the Lions or Tigers den or whatever you want to say, mm. and really sit into the face of what's been the Goliath of the SIAC really since the inception of the conference, I know it's got to give this conf this group uh, so much confidence here going into the remainder of the season. Oh, absolutely. That was the win that, uh, you know, we needed to put ourselves on the map. As I said to them, we can say what we are, but until we go out and actually prove it on the field uh, for four quarters of football, um, then, you know, the jury's still out. But this week, you know, they it took all 60, set, all 60 minutes of it. And, um, you know, they played hard. They were a very resilient group. Um, coming down, you know, we got down early 14 nothing. They were able to claw back in. And then I thought around the midway point of the third quarter, we kind of got a little bit of the control of the game and the flow of the game. Uh, then the two men, the final two minutes was probably the most exciting um, two minutes of football that um, as a coach I've ever been a part of. Uh, so, you know, hats off to that Tuskegee program. Uh, they played they play equally as hard. Uh, but uh, we were able to come out with the win. You talk about the the offense a lot uh, in these in these things. Let's talk about the defense first. Yeah. Five takeaways last yes. week in that contest against Tuskegee. It started off to get the offense kind of started off a little bit slow, a little bit skittish, but the defense were able to say, hey, if we're going to get something done, we got to do it ourselves. And Jaron Wilson had the game of his life. Six tackles, two tackles for loss, two sacks, a forced fumble, and that forced fumble led to that first score of the contest, mm -hmm. a, a fumble recovering the touchdown for, for James Gary in the end zone. And you just saw that engine and that confidence of this team continue to grow as the game went along. You know, in the defense, uh, they, I take my hat off for their, their performance. Um, you know, in some emphasis from a defense, they were everything that you needed. Um, they, they, they bent sometimes, but they didn't break. Uh, they got down in the uh, red zone and had their backs against the wall and then came up with another turnover there. Um, then not to mention they had another touchdown that was uh, called back from a turnover that they created. Uh, so they were they played lights out. Um, they were very optimistic. Uh, and, uh, you know, the offense didn't get started as fast as uh, it has the past couple of weeks, but that's what team ball is. You know, defense stood up and they held the fort down until the offense would get things rolling. And coming out of there in the second half, uh, necessary adjustments were made and offense got rolling and defense continued to uh, create opportunities. Jonathan Gregory gets an interception on Saturday, as does D'Angelo Sapp. I think Sapp probably had his best game of the season last right. week. Had an interception. Had one, we talked about it a minute ago, had one called back. But, uh, again, he just continues to just get better. I mean, he really has just kind of honed in and focused in on his job here at, at that cornerback spot. Uh, definitely. You know, he um, plays and practices at a high level. Uh, you know, he typically takes care of uh, what Matt Eugene, their number one wide receiver week in and week out. So, uh, you know, he gets from, he gets work every week and uh, he's continuously getting better. He's the long type kid that we like, 6'2-ish, uh, and has great immaculate ball skills, former quarterback. So he's still growing into that position. So I'm excited though, for some of the success that he's been able to experience the last couple of weeks here. Uh, most namely on track. Let's flip over to the offense now. I mean, what what more can you say about this offense? I mean, it's another game of, of plus 400 yards in total offense. Uh, you, I heard in, in an interview you said earlier this week about talking to Jared about his performance while it was great. He said it's probably the ugliest <laughs> game he's had. Uh, but again, this offense has just been unbelievable. Uh, I mean, they just continue to just, you know, make their presence known in this conference really throughout all the divisions of football. Definitely. Uh, they, 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 uh, they had the opportunity to Get to a slow start, but then once we once they get that first score and start to move the lights on the scoreboard, they they catch momentum, and that's what ended up happening. And uh, uh, we haven't been a team that's had to throw the ball seventy yards down the field uh, to get big play completions. Uh, just continuing to play within the system, those short intermediate routes that he's getting to uh, Johnny and Nate. Nate turned another uh, routine hitch into a almost another seventy yard touchdown, and then. Uh, you know, that's what gives us the opportunity to be able to take those shots down the field. So I was really pleased with Jaron being patient um, and not, you know, pressing a route as much as he did in the first half and allowing the game to come to him um, and leaning on every aspect of it. You know, the offensive line, again, uh, again, one of the biggest plays that uh, probably won't go down statistically, but um, the touchdown that Huji had, uh, the two runs prior to the uh, touchdown that he had to come in and kind of try to put the momentum and then down in that two-minute drill uh, at the towards the end of the game, the catch that uh, Devin uh, Thompson comes down with. Uh, for, I think this is like three weeks in a row he's had 
um, a great catch that set us up to um, be in position to win the game. And yeah. The running game has been very, very tough. It was tough last week. I saw Juju was a little bit banged up last week. Uh, but Jontarius Thomas really took a lot of, the, of that work last week against Tuskegee and really played some had played some big uh, uh, moments there in that contest. How big was, was his contribution to last week's victory? Uh, it, was, it was a great uh, contribution. You know, him being able to come in and balance uh, some of the workload with Juju. Um, you know, they're, they're one and the same, but they're totally different in their running styles. Uh, their build might be the same, but they possess different attributes that complement each other great, um, greatly. So, um, you know, when we have both of them in the game, that just gives the different uh, dynamics of the run game as far as their skill set and what they can do um, running behind this offensive line. Looking at the fourth quarter, I know when you know, your squad went up 35-24, you kind of saw everyone getting happy, uh, excited mm -hmm. on the sideline. And I saw there was a moment you called everyone over as if to say, hey, hey, Let's relax. Let's calm down. Let's do what we need to do because you know that team across the field, they're not going to give up without a fight, and they certainly did not. And, and they were able to come back with, with two uh, big touchdowns, retake the lead with 20 seconds left in the game. But one thing we should say about this football team, if there's some time on the clock, there's still a chance, and they're going to fight you all the way to the end. And that, and that was the thing, guys. You know, we just brought them up and wanted to gain their composure, um, you know, let them know we're excited that we're up in the game, but we came here expecting to win. So, um, the game's not over. We know that this is a battle-tested program. This is a battle-tested team. Um, you know, they they two weeks ago were in, was in a game that was two overtime. So uh, we knew they weren't going to panic. So we just wanted to take a, a little time to get our composure back and uh, withstand the run that we knew that they were going to make and then uh, be able, if there was time left on the clock, for us to be able to um, take our opportunity and go down and answer. I think a lot of people don't know about this, but the play before I fired McCorker's touchdown reception, Devin almost had an opportunity to be the hero in that contest, Devin Thompson. He had his hands on the football, got right. stripped away at the last minute, but uh, again, just the resilience of the squad, and, and I know uh, my heart was in my chest when that ball went up for that final, with two seconds left on the clock. Uh, my heart was in my chest, and it, it kind of echoed through, through the call, but to see everybody rush the field in white and, and midnight purple uniforms, to see the president on the field running and jumping up and down in his orange jacket, and uh, just to see the excitement of everyone. For everything that this program has been through, to be able to have that moment, to be able to capture that moment, I know it puts the program on the map, and you know the, the, the sky is only uh, upper here for this program. Right. You know, we, we enjoyed it, uh, but, you know, as we said to them on the bus ride back, this is one that we can enjoy on the bus. But once we get back to Jacksonville, we got to turn the page and we can't have a victory hangover. Uh, so that's one of the focus of the last three uh, days here that we've been focusing on, moving the page, turning it, enjoying it. But again, uh, you know, not saying it from a, 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 a arrogant aspect. We expect it to go down there. You know? So um, now that they know that they can compete at a high level, now that becomes a standard that we now have to continue to hold everyone to that standard. Now we turn the page because it's coming Saturday. Another very important ball game here this Saturday here at home. A 6 o'clock p.m. kickoff against the Golden Rams of Albany State University, a squad that is, is definitely a little bit angry because from the performance that they had, a tough loss against the opponent that we'll see next week on the road against Allen University. But you know that Queen Gray's guys are going to come in ready to go. It wasn't that long ago that Deontay Bono was the, was the guy in the SIAC. Right. He was the Offensive Player of the Year in 2021 preseason offensive player of the year in 2022. Uh, he's just a phenomenal quarterback, and mm -hmm. you know his guys around him are going to play play hard football. They've got a solid defense there, so you know they're going to be ready to come in and try to spoil the party here on Saturday. Absolutely. You know Coach Gray is going to have that team ready to go. Uh, they're going to be hungry for a win coming off of last week's performance. Uh, so they're coming into Jacksonville, and we know that they're, they're going to be amped and ready to play. So we just have to firstly uh, make sure that they meet our level of energy and uh, we're not playing, you know, in a, in a sense of where it's uh, emotionally up, down. We have to just come in, stay true to who we are, uh, be obedient to our game plan, and then uh, allow the plays to make themselves. A lot of storylines in this bar, in, in this contest coming up here on Saturday. Definitely one knowing that uh, you and Coach Gray are, are great friends, teammates there down there at Dillard High School. Uh, I know you're going to have a, a Dillard group that's going to be coming here to support both of you guys. What does it mean to have that Fort Lauderdale community, that Dillard community, to be able to come up here to support both, both you, Coach Gray, and Coach Jenkins? Be able, he's, a, he's a Dillard fan. So what does it mean to have those guys and gals be able to come here and support you guys here this Saturday? No, it's great. Uh, when, they, when they called and said that they would be putting together um, you know, the troops to come on up and, and support both of us. It was great, but that's that's who Dillard is. You know, they've always supported, always taken care of their own. Uh, it's where I got my first start as a head coach. And um, actually, you know, as, as, a, as a young coach right, right out of college, you know, being able to go back there and, and get some experience. 
So I'm excited that they're they're coming up, and we know that they're going to come and they're going to cheer. Uh, but they'll probably be the only ones that will definitely go home with a win this week. Uh, Either way. <laughs> so we got, and we're hoping to join that that crew there. Absolutely. We'll be on that side of the pencil. Absolutely. <laughs> It'll be a special uh, special contest here on Saturday as well as uh, uh, we have a free admission game here. If, you, if, you, if uh, fans are able to bring uh, two uh, non fast book food items, uh, you know, gently used or, or worn, or gently used or new coat and a, a pair of, or a pair of socks. To be able to come into this contest for free, so it's just an oppor- another opportunity for our program to be able to give back to the community. You know, things are you know, it's going to get a little colder here as we have our jackets on here. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's it's going to get a little bit colder, but it's just another way to be able to show uh, that this community means so much to us, and we want to be able to give back to our community. And that's big, you know, especially for these student athletes to be able to see that um, the administration, the athletic administration, is making a commitment like that on their behalf uh, to be able to serve the community that supports us uh, every week. So with that being said, we want to make sure that you guys come out and enjoy a family-oriented environment and some great football and something special is happening right here off Kings Road. It's also our Breast Cancer Awareness Contest on Saturday, so we're encouraging all of our fans to come out in pink on Saturday to support everyone in the fight against breast cancer. Well, Coach, let's get you out of the practice, see if we can get another one here on Saturday. Do, go that's, that's the head coach of Zagas for Ronald Morgan. Kickoff will be at 6 o'clock p.m. The broadcast will be on the Black College Sports Network as well as on Fence and XL here in Jacksonville. Until we talk to you again on Saturday, I'm Joshua Jackson. We'll talk to you again down the road.